we all doing? And welcome to episode eight of the introduction to urban homesteading um, series of lives. Um, <laughs> Hello to Tony in Tech Kettle Kitchen, um, Fields of Gold. How how are you? I'm confused about your time zone. It's 11 a.m. here right now. Where is 11 a.m. there, Blue? Um, it's 3 p.m. Oh, 4 p.m. Sorry, GMT. Um, yeah. Hi, Tiger454 and Rebecca over at Suburban Hillbilly. How are you, darling? It's good to see you all. So today we're going to be talking all about composting, making your own composts and feeds and fertilizers and such like, um, because it's a very, very important part of your garden, which is pretty much um, the center of a lot of our production when it comes down to the urban homestead. So we're going to go into that because there is so much so much to know. <laughs> Hi, Janet. How are you, darling? It's good to see you. Okay, so when it comes down to composting and such, there are as many as as many countries as there are in the world. There are as many ways to do composting, making fertilizers, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so. Be aware of that before we even start. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the top 10 that I think that most of us who are watching this channel can do at home without too much hassle. Um, and the ones that um, aren't going to cost you as much and aren't going to take up more room than you could possibly use. Hi, Diggy. How you doing, Steve, mate? good to see you guys if you're not following dig well green figures you really really should be because what this guy doesn't know about gardening really isn't worth knowing okay um oh fields of gold that's okay darling it's no problem friday i'm i'll, I'll let you know that i'm always on at four my time so it's this time always so yeah Five hours difference, yeah. No worries, not at all, not a problem. Okay, so, yeah, like I said, there are as many countries as there are in the world, there are ways of <laughs> making different compost fertilizers and feeds for your garden, mostly because different countries use different plants, um, you know, use different things. They do use different... Um, methods and there's all sorts of things and what what happens is that now that we've got things like youtube etc we've been able to learn from different cultures and actually start bringing a few of those together to create better compost for ourselves whereas the majority of people with their compost bins and stuff will do like a lasagna effect in something like a dalek what we call a dalek bin which is the big tall one um, with a little lid on it and they'll sort of fill those up with green grass and different greens and browns and such um so you know that that's great it's not a problem it tends to get left for a few months and then you end up with compost which is great but there are better ways of doing it as well but if that's all you've got then that's what you can use and there's nothing wrong with doing that as a basic garden compost Okay, so even just like when, when I talk about your greens, you're looking at things like fresh grass clippings, manures, um, green leaves, kitchen scraps, seaweed and seaweed. So if you're near the coast or you have the chance to go to a beach or something, take a bucket with you and grab as much of that seaweed as you can. Um, the brown organic waste is things like wood chips, Cardboard, dried plant matter, straw, hay, sawdust, and paper. Um, so you can just layer it all up and just make sure that you're pretty equal between the two lots of what you're doing. Um, and then, of course, obviously, then you have to water it down so that it's got a bit of, you know, 
water going on. A uh, bit of moisture. Okay. So it does what you want it to do. Now, what we're talking about here are rotting methods of composting. There are really three different kinds of processes, and they basically come down to rotting, fermenting, and teas or infusions, whatever you want to call them. So the ones that we're talking about first are the rotting methods. <laughs> These are not generally considered proper terms. They're just the terms that I'm using um, because it works for me, okay? Um, I'm not sure anyone really calls it a rotting method when it comes to composting. I think most of them just call it composting. So, yeah. But once you've got this process down pat, then you get to expand your knowledge and then you can add in other methods, most of which include two or three of the different ways of creating composts and fertilizers and feeds for your garden. For example, Compassi. Now, if you guys aren't following the Weedy Garden, I really do suggest you go and do that. Um, he has some incredible knowledge. And I'm just going to send you this link in chat right now because um, this is a video on him explaining Kompashi. Now, Kompashi is a, com a combination of a Japanese fermentation method called Bokashi and composting okay which is absolutely incredible it's, it's an incredible thing to do um so basically compassion is the process of using several more layers in your compost including a gray layer of crush of dust or volcanic rock um or basalt dust dust and a black layer so like charcoal including the vocab including like a um also a bacteria juice similar to what is created with bokashi and um molasses okay so let me just pull up this little thing here so that you guys can see it all right now that is the method <laughs> this is this this is um the weedy gardens actual um, little graphic that you had on Facebook. I just sort of like borrowed it for today. I don't think he'll mind at all because he's a lovely, lovely fella. Okay, so that is the ingredients for Kompashi. Now, the thing is with Kompashi, it's slightly different to normal um, compost in you want to cut, chop everything up really, 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 really small. But what you're also going to do is you're going to turn it every couple of days for 21 days and because of the way that it's created with the bacteria juice and all of that kind of thing you're going to end up with it all breaking down and having a usable compost within 21 days so normal compost takes around three to six months this stuff is awesome and ready for use within 21 days which is amazing let's be completely honest all right so yeah so let's be honest that is pretty awesome especially if you're just starting out and you you, you know you want to have you you need to get some compost on the go really quick now if you're looking for things like um the crusher dust you need to go to a um stone supplier okay and talk to them about it but there are very specific ones you want to get you want to definitely either get volcanic rock dust or you want to get basalt you don't want to get the other ones because some of them are just not right for the garden these are going to add in extra trace minerals and if you think about the places in the world that have volcanic rock in their soil like hawaii and parts of italy you know they have incredible, incredible production and farming there because of 
the um, kinds of um, minerals and stuff that are in that soil already because of this incredible um, volcanic rock. Um, let's just have a look at chat very quickly. Um, <laughs> oh, bless you. Um, I have a compost pile. Cool. That's awesome. Fields of gold. Um, suburban hillbilly. I saw a, a massive compost pile catch fire when they piled up limbs and tree mulch to build a subdivision behind my house. It was a big fire. It would be. Um, yeah, no, it's a very interesting method. It is definitely one to try. Um, yes, molasses is great for stopping scab as well in potatoes. Um, hi, Ashley. How are you, darling? It's good to see you. Thank you for coming in. <laughs> okay. So that's Compassi in a nutshell, kind of. Yep. And then we've got vermiculture. Now, vermiculture, for those of you may know its more common name is worm farming. Now, this can be done very simply, and you get two products out of this. Well, three, really, if you count the worms, because, you you know, what, happy worms always make more worms, so you end up with more worms that you can put out in your garden, and that's always good for soil health. You also get the um, worm castings, which is you know, the soil that they produce from breaking down all of the kitchen scraps and the other things that you put in there with them. Um, also, they produce a liquid as well, a liquid feed, which is absolutely incredible, which is why a lot of worm farms, if you buy them, they've got a little tap on the bottom so that you can actually open up um, the bottom of the worm farm and it will collect all of that liquid feed down the bottom and that is absolute gold for your garden but you only want to use like 100 ml of it to 10 liters of water you don't want to use a lot of it otherwise you know it's it's you're going to use up too much you'll overfeed and that won't be fun okay oh fields of gold i'm sorry uh makes total sense i'm sure the molasses feeds the microorganisms i put as a mite on my garden periodically to restore the minerals i've taken from the soil over the years yes yes okay so now there is a channel on um youtube that honestly he's a mate of mine he's awesome really um and has a lot of knowledge when it comes to things like vermiculture and growing, etc. Okay, so I want to hang on. My computer is being not very friendly. Okay, um, so I want you to go and see him. Go and see Al about more stuff to do with worm farming and vermiculture because honestly he does a lot of this um okay so you know um the thing with vermiculture as well is if you do have a colder climate you need to be able to protect them over winter because if the soil freezes your worms die okay so having a smaller worm farm might be better for you where it can come inside over the winter rather than having something like a big bathtub, which a lot of places do have because you may not be able to keep that warm over the winter. But, you know, it's all learning, yeah? But, yeah, so if you want to learn more about vermiculture, I would go and see Al over at Sharing is Key because he does some amazing stuff on vermiculture. There are, there's a lot, a lot of different ways. Okay, so those are those are the main, hey, Paul, Paul, how are you, darling? Um, those are the main rotting methods of composting. Now we're going to look at the liquid fertilizers, okay? So liquid fertilizers are basically like the liquid versions of compost. They're not quite a tea. Um, but it's more a fertilizer as you're growing the bacteria in that rather than creating a fermented um, infusion. So this is more like a fermented 
a fermented compost, if that makes sense. Um, but in liquid form. It, it, it's it's like the best of both worlds of the comp of the rotting methods and the infusion methods. So you're doing it all together. And these ones include things like comfries, nettles, bananas. Um, you can use things like chicken manure, human pea, um, because all of these things you're going to end up with amazing nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium and potassium. Now, these kinds of feeds are incredibly expensive to buy, um, but you can make them really cheaply yourself, uh, you know, all of because you've pretty much got a lot of these things around you at all the time. Okay, so hi, Annie. How are you, darling? Our new land, it's good to see you. Okay, so when, when you're making up the liquid fertilizers, I would suggest you don't mix them up. I would suggest that you make them all individually, all right? Um, the reason being that if you mix them up, you may end up with too much of something, whereas if you have them in separate buckets, you can pull out what you need definitely um, rather than mixing them all together. You can mix them all together. There's nothing wrong with that. You can do it. It's my personal preference though. And what I suggest is having them separately rather than all in one bucket. So, and partly also because you want to have, um, oh, what's that word again? <laughs> oh, I lost this word earlier today. <laughs> um concentrate okay so if you're mixing up your ingredients for liquid fertilizers it's only it's you're not going to have a, as great a concentrate of certain minerals or nutrients in it as you would do if you just keep them separate rather than if they're all mixed up so you want to have them as concentrated in those things as possible so if you're doing things like comfrey and nettles then you're going to get a really good nitrogen fix so you could technically put all of those together but you wouldn't want to put bananas in there because from there you're going to get phosphorus calcium and potassium um, some people that I know of do do egg eggshells and eggs um, which again is another calcium one um, but you know then it, it, it's up to you what you want to do and what you want to play with. You can use things like pure chicken manure as well to make these fertilizers, um, the liquid ones. So basically what you want to be doing is in a big five gallon or 20 liter bucket is fill it with 20% of the ingredients you're choosing to use. Now you want to have those chopped up as, as small as reasonable right the reason being that the bacteria that you want have got very small mouths <laughs> the smaller the pieces the easier it's going to be in there for them to be able to get in there and get you know create all the goodness <laughs> so um in in that um 20 liter bucket you're going to want 20 percent of the ingredients you took choosing to use plus you want to have 500 ml of bacteria juice and 500 ml of molasses or brown sugar and fill the rest up with clean water now if you're living in town and the chances are that you have chlorine in your water just fill the bucket up with water and leave it overnight or for 24 hours with the lid off so that the um, chlorine can evaporate off because it's a gas at the end of the day so yeah you can you can evaporate it off hi ashley how are you darling it's good to see you um so when i'm talking about um bacteria juice now this is a really really interesting one now bacteria juice 
is your own way of being able to create lactobacillus bacteria. Okay, so, and it is a bit of a process, but it's worth doing yourself. It really, really is. All you're going to need is a one litre jar and a two litre jar. Okay, so you're going to need them both, but not yet. Um, so you want one litre jar that you're filling with fresh water. Again, if you're living in town, let that water sit out unless you've got a rainwater tank or something like that. Let it sit out for 24 hours before you use it because the chlorine can damage the process. Okay, so you don't want to do that. Then you want to have 500 grams of rice and add that to the one litre of water. You want to mix it up really, really well in the water. Okay, once you've done that, let it sit for 24 hours before straining off the rice and keeping the liquid because it's the liquid you want. So that rice then can go onto your compost heap if that's what you want to do. Hi, Katie, how are you? It's good to see you, Katie. Um, so, yeah, then you want to, like I said, you can use distilled or bottled water. I would probably be a little bit careful with the bottled water mostly because in transport um unless the bottled water is actually in glass bottles in in a lot of cases the bottled water tends to be kept in hot areas and then you end up with um plastics in the water which is why i tend to try and stay away from bottled water if i can um because you don't know how hot it, they've been, you know. They, for for example, they've got an issue in Australia, um, or Coca Cola does um, have an issue in Australia because they ship via road train. So a road train is a truck that's got three or four trailers on the back of it. Can have up to six um, trailers. They, they transport those to the middle of Australia um, with their drinks on it. Now, the problem is that a lot of their drinks contain aspartame. That aspartame, because it's stuck in 30 to 40 to 50 Celsius heat in those trucks and the trucks aren't refrigerated, that aspartame then turns into formaldehyde and has been poisoning people. So... Um, yeah, fun and games. So, yes, you can use distilled or bottled water if you so wish. Not my choice, but you can do that if you want to. Um, yeah. Yeah, don't drink bottled water if you see condensation around the tops for sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so. But you can get a distiller as well. Distillers are reasonably cheap and you can do that. You can distill your own water. I think most of them are about five litre, five litres or something. But if you're doing this kind of thing on the regular, if you've got a water butt, just use the water from the water butt to do it because that will be rain catchment. So it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, so, yeah, then, then you want to. So once you've strained off the rice, you want to pour that water into a clean jar and cover it with a piece of breathable cloth. So if you've got a piece of cheesecloth or something like that and a rubber band, um, just pop that over the top and get it to hold on there nicely. So after about five days, that very cloudy mess that you have of water that you have in that jar will start smelling like sourdough starter. It's the best way I can describe it. Yeah, so exactly, yep, suburban hillbilly, that's exactly what formaldehyde is. So, um, yeah, so it will start to smell like sourdough starter. When it starts smelling sweet, that's when it's ready. Okay, so if it has, smells like sourdough starter and then has that little sweet smell to it, that's when it's ready, yeah? On that day, you're going to add one liter of milk to that liquid okay now it has to be absolutely has to be dairy milk 
All right. Yes, it is fermented. It's a fermented um, rice water at this stage. Now, the reason it has to be dairy milk. I've had college classes that were not this informative. Oh, thanks, Popo. OK, so. <laughs> yeah. So you're going to put those together in. I would probably use a glass jar that's got a little like a little tap on it okay so because and and i'll explain why in a bit because after three to four, seven days that's that milk is going the the liquid is then going to separate into curds and whey all right now the reason you're doing this is because it helps to get rid of the bacteria you don't want and keep only the lactobacillus which is what you do want okay so the lactobacillus what happens is that the good bacteria that you want the lactobacillus bacteria they'll eat the lactose which will turn into lactose lactic acid and that will kill all the other bacteria you don't want okay so once it has turned into that nice little split between the curds and the whey, um, you want to pour the whey off. So if you don't have a tap, if, if you so if you have got one of those glass jars with a tap on the bottom, um, you you can just pour it off, opening up the tap. Just make sure it's in another jar. Okay. So or you know obviously if it's not just scoop the curds off just make sure there's no curds left in it and those curds can then go on your compost all right so at this point you want to have a 10 liter bucket which is a two and a half gallon i want to say two and a half gallon um and in there you want to have one part whey which is like 250 mil um and one part molasses which is again 250 mil to 40 parts clean water so if you've only got a five gallon of yeah a five gallon bucket or 20 liter bucket then you want to put 500 mil of each of the whey and the molasses in there and then fill that up with water now you want to fill you want to put that in a cool dark place for a week once that's there to use it, all you need is 100 mil of that to 10 litres of water, okay? And then you can literally, you can feed that to your plants. Or you can get jugs of it as it is, and then you can put that um, on your kompashi pile as your bokashi part of it. So you can actually use that as your in um, bacteria juice so when you're setting up the liquid fertilizers one of the best ways to do that is not only to have 20 percent of your comfrey nettles bananas or whatever you're going to put in there but then to add 500 mils of that bacteria juice that you've i've just explained to you how to make it in there with it because that will put all the good stuff in there and help to create more. So, because the more you have of that, the better off your plants are going to be. Okay. Ha! <laughs> and don't forget, this is all going to be written into the Introduction to Urban Homesteading booklet that will be available once we finish the series. Um, and so you will get that in there if you're a patreon um this this particular episode will be out in uh six four weeks no six weeks time <laughs> it is six weeks time All right ah okay let's just have a have a breath for a second because that was a lot to get through okay that was a lot to get through let's have a look 
Yeah, rotting method, that's fine. That's mine. Just throw food scraps, leaves and grass or wood chips, but wood chips take too long. They can do. Um, Because Blue is smart and does not pay a professor on YouTube. No, I don't. Dr. Blue. <laughs> I could call myself that because of some of my qualifications. I choose not to. I just find it very pretentious. <sighs> Hey, Janine, how are you, darling? You still got snow? As melted by 8 o'clock this morning, it was gone. Oh, Ashley, I'm so glad you enjoyed the Welsh cakes, mate. That 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 makes my little heart happy. <sighs> you want to pre-order this series in writing? No worries. All good. No problem. have a cup of brew with blue and walk away with a degree i know right see you know it's up here for thinking mate all right so the next bit we're going to get into is we're going to get into um oh we're going to get into the teas now where are we at yeah we're going to get into the teas now there's a lot of different ones loads of different ones that you can use okay but they all come down to the same thing they're all in a few infusion um the the, the snow is blowing sideways right now really no okay so i had to take a picture this morning because we got we did get snow for about 30 seconds we had snow and I was very excited by the fact we had snow for 30 seconds. So I took this photo outside my house at 4 o'clock this morning. That, that was our snow. That's what we got for snow this morning. Yeah, that was it. Okay. Um, and then by about 9, 10 o'clock it was gone. Hey, Paul, how are you, darling? Paul's Green Space. Guys, if you're not following Paul, go fo follow Paul. He's awesome. He's um, a gardener over. He, he's got a really awesome little home garden um, in Oz, and it is fabulous. Yeah, at least we got some. Yeah, we got some, and that was good. Okay, so in this bit, so we've gone through pretty much, we've gone through the rotting compost type things we've gone through the liquid fertilizers now we're going to go for the feeds which are slightly different they're the teas <sighs> oh far out now the teas are infusions and they kind they do work like the liquid fertilizers but you don't have to add things like the bacteria brew to it um and you can use them more often um so there's what one of them one set is your starch waters now starch waters are things like rice water pasta water and potato water that are left over from cooking those things so if you're boiling pasta, boiling rice or boiling um, potatoes, keep that water because that will actually give you a really nice little feed of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. OK, they don't need you'd want to make sure that they're completely cool, though, before you use them and you can use them as is. They don't need they're not concentrated. They just are what they are. And you can put those straight on your plants. Those particular ones, though, really good for your root vegetables. Um, so you want to put those out on your leafy greens and your root vegetables. So, yeah, and they will thank you for it. But just make sure absolutely um, that um, it is completely cold before you use it. Otherwise, you're going to burn your plants. I did try the green tea compost post. It smelt so bad I dumped it, but may try it again. Yeah, it will stink. 
it is one of the worst smelling things on the planet but it is one of the best things for the garden um comfrey tea nettle tea weed tea any of those um i have one that is been macerating for two years now in the shed a big 10 liter bucket of nettle tea um the way that i do it is i fill the bucket with nettles completely fill it and i put a brick on top of it and then i fill that with water and put the lid on now i make sure that the lid is basically forcing the brick down there are so many nettles in there when i do it when i open that i'm probably gonna gag i'm not gonna lie it's gonna be rank but you know what it's gonna be awesome because my plants are gonna thank me for it they really really are it's gonna be an amazing source of nitrogen for them and i will only need something like a cap full so not even a quarter of a cup um to a 10 liter um watering can to use it so it's going to be amazing um sarah's garden kitchen uses urine one to ten later part urine yes you can do that i did yes you can you absolutely can there's nothing wrong with that at all if you're going to use things like that what you want to do is because that's that they're actually really amazing um i used to send my kids to the lemon trees and the citrus trees so if you have lemon or citrus trees send your children to them if they're playing outside and get them to pee up the tree because it is the best thing for them also tomatoes love it absolutely love it some of the best tomatoes we ever had when my kids were playing out in the garden and they, we were growing tomatoes because i wouldn't let them inside because they were covered in mud so that you know you got two choices you got the tomatoes or you got the lemon tree off you go see ya <laughs> sounds like making sauerkraut no sauerkraut is actually pleasant compared to making nettle or comfrey tea um and i'm not gonna lie to you sauerkraut is simple compared to but yes when well, if, if you mean the process of getting it all underneath the water with a brick and that kind of thing then yes it is if you use it doing salted sauerkraut so i had to think there for a second but yes but the smell itself is something completely different it's completely different and i'm just warning you okay <laughs> so yeah your starchy ones are your rice water um pasta water and potato water from washing or um cooking those and they're really really good for your greens eggshell water now this is a really really good one all right so don't throw out the water left over from boiling your eggs you've got to let it cool use it to feed and water your plants um it's an awesome one it's absolutely jam-packed full of calcium that's come straight out of those eggs okay so always 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 keep that water what i tend to do when it comes down to summer is that i will if i've been cooking i'll just put all of those waters together in a bucket because it doesn't actually matter because they're teas rather than concentrated fertilizers it makes a difference so yeah um they can just go on the bed without a problem the other part is keep your um that's okay um keep your eggshells grind them up fine and pop them around tender plants if you have them around good not only will they start leaching their calcium into the soil but it will actually stop slugs from coming around because they really don't like it and we don't want slugs and snails over everything um also vegetable water vegetable water from cooking your vegetables if you are boiling vegetables or steaming vegetables keep that water because that is enriched with all those nutrients from those vegetables another one 
to add to your little bucket of lovely teas that you can just pour all over everything. But again, please, 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 make sure it's cold first. Don't put it on hot. If you put it on hot, you're going to get a boiled cabbage plant. Trust me. Um, banana peels. Now, this is a really, really good one because it'll give you a really nice potassium tea to put over everything. Now, you can put them in as is into a bucket or you can cut them down, that sort of thing, because it does help. Um, Potassium is really necessary for a lot of plants. It does help to strengthen them because it helps to thicken their cell walls um, and to make them grow really big and strong. And that's what you want, um, especially when it comes to fruit trees. So fruit trees and things like cucumbers and tomatoes, where you want that cell structure to be as big as possible um, so that you have some really lovely fruit and that's going to be stable you know, and not split and things like that. That's that's where you want to have be using your banana peels. I would cut them down, though, and probably leave it in a tea overnight to infuse overnight before using it, if that's what you want to do. Um, you can leave it for up to three days, but at that point you're starting to make a ferment, um, which there's nothing wrong with that. There really isn't anything wrong with that, but it does mean that it will be concentrate and you won't be able to pour it straight onto your plants if that's what you need to do. Okay, so, yeah. Um, the other thing you can do as well is you can actually leave your banana peels to dry out in the sun. Now, if you leave them to dry out in the sun, you can stick them in the blender or the food processor and turn them into a powder and sprinkle that powder either through water or just sprinkle it straight on, onto your plants, okay? So that's another really good way of doing it as well if you don't want to have, if you haven't got room for buckets and buckets and buckets of different things all over the place. Dry them out in the sun, make them into a powder, and then pop them on your plants. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so coffee grounds. Coffee grounds is an awesome one, actually. Um, you can, of course, use old coffee um, that's left over from the pot as long as, again, it's gone cold. Um, so you want to use that. You get a lot of nitrogen and potassium through your, co your um, coffee grounds, which is really, really awesome. It's really, really great for pest management as well because it deters a lot of really unwanted pests. It um, Some people say that it does get rid of cats. I'm not convinced. Hey! Hey, Ginger! Best gravy, not instant, is made with veg cooking water. The rest is used for watering plants and eggshells, coffee grounds and tea leaves. Yes. Yes, save all your coffee grounds and tea leaves. Even if they're in the tea bags, it doesn't matter. You can still use those. Um, plants like roses really love tea. Not coffee. They love tea and tea leaves. And you will absolutely do them favours if you've got a rose in your garden or a rose garden. Tea. Feed it tea all the time. Loves it. You can't overfeed it. Um... Uh, the reason I know you can't overfeed it is because my mother used to have a big rose garden and every day the tea tea bags and teas all used to go out there. Hello, Renee. How are you, darling? Oh, listening while proof, proofing ads for tomorrow's paper. Oh, thanks, darling. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Okay. So if you want to make liquid fertilizer from the coffee grounds, Add a cup of used coffee grounds to a bucket of water. Let it sit for a day or two. Then you've got your liquid fertilizer feed. Okay, so you can do that. You can make it go a little bit further. That's not a problem. Now, here's a really good one. Okay, lots of people have fish tanks. Lots of people have fish tanks. And they've got like a little goldfish floating around. I mean, 
you probably got more than just a little goldfish floating around let's be honest but when you're cleaning that water out and cleaning that tank out that water needs to go on your plants that is one of the best fertilizers you can put on your plants um okay but not not if they're saltwater fish okay only if they're like goldfish or clear water fish um you do not want to use saltwater fish water on your plants you will kill your plants too much salt okay so you don't want to be doing that wood ash wood ash is another really really good one um again your brassicas will love you for this because it loads of potassium um and it you know if, if you've got plants that need um a little bit more acidity in the soil use some um wood ash in there not a lot you don't need a lot um okay uh so no actually it raises the ph of the soil so it actually drops so yeah don't use it on things like blueberries use it on things that oh far out sorry brain fart brain's gone okay all right so wood ash is high in potassium and raises the ph of your soil so you don't want to use it on acidic loving plants like blueberries. So, but you do want to use it on things like brassicas and chards and your greens that are going to really thank you for it. And it will help to keep some of the bugs off as well. But you only want to use ash from wood that's chemical free, untreated wood. If you don't, you're gonna end up with chemicals that still have traces over and that's not okay for the plants because they will take those up as well. Okay, pardon me. Ooh, uh, squeeze me. So yeah, then we've got our compost teas. All right. <sighs> so compost tea is great if you've got potted plants, don't have room to add extra soil to top up the nutrients. So if you've got containers and such, this is the best way to do it. To make this easy organic fertilizer, you just want to have a few handfuls of compost in a bucket of water and stir it. You want to be using your own homemade compost for this. Okay. Um, use your own homemade compost for this and get a couple of handfuls of that into the water. And then you can feed your plants with that. All right. You can do it that way um let it sit for two to 24 hours and infuse okay use basically with any of these feeds when it with any of the liquid fertilizers any of that use rainwater if you possibly can that's your best option if you've got a creek or a pond or somewhere where you know the water is you know safe to use use that water that's not there's nothing wrong with that either if you are, are in town and you've only got tap water leave a bucket out that's been filled with the tap water overnight for at least 24 hours to let that chlorine which is in a lot of the water town water evaporate off okay okay jamie no worries darling you're welcome absolutely that's okay you you know you guys can take notes as much as you want it's still gonna be here afterwards <sighs> that's okay you need to build some logs lying around to get some ashes thanks didn't know which plant they like that's all right and also you can use some of that charcoal as well to put on your compost because that will add in that's your black compost layer then you've got your charcoal and you can add a little bit of the ash to it as well. So that, that's a really good way of using it as well. Um, whew. Okay. So liquid seafood, seaweed, 
not all of us have access to the the beach or to the coast or anything but if you can get your hands on some fresh seaweed again um double check though because some places have rules about removing seaweed from the beach be very careful about that there may be regulations double check make sure you're not getting in trouble for taking seaweed home with you you probably shouldn't you really shouldn't but some places are a bit funny about it um yay we got some rain barrels and joey put up a gutter coming off the carport to gather rainwater for plants absolutely awesome uh, please explain again how we can get this information later. Okay, so this this whole series, it's going to be a 12 to 16 part series. It depends on quite how long it goes for. Um, some of these sections are going to have to go a little bit longer than others um, uh, or over a few more weeks. But once it's finished, I will be putting a booklet together with all of this information that will then be available for shop page on my blog um and it will be available there for download it will be five uh, a five dollar charge for it and that money will be going towards com um, purchasing things like compost and plants and seeds and more pots so that um, i can supply a group here in york with extra food seedlings that they take to the local food, food banks for people to be able to grow their own food. The other way that you can get it is if you are a Patreon of mine. Um, it is $1 a month to join my Patreon. The link is down below in the description. Um, and I am releasing one section a week of this or to my Patreons. And I have been for the last couple of weeks. So we're on week eight. I will be releasing week three this week um, and you also get downloadable recipe cards etc on there as well and on my special series of videos your name will pop up on the end as a patreon to say thank you and of course there's other stuff that will be coming but i don't want people to feel like they miss out so i'm keeping it at a dollar for everyone no beach here. I live in the forest. That's fine. It's not a problem. Not a problem. Thank you. Can't wait. No worries. All good. So, yeah, there we go. So we're looking at liquid sea seaweed. Now what you want to do, ah, <laughs> you want to ferment it in a bucket of water for a week or more brew up your own organic fertilizer with it okay now there is a lot of really amazing good stuff in seaweed not only does it have the usual suspects of nitrogens and all that but it's also got things like iodine and salts and things like that in it as well but you want to make sure that it's broken down quite a lot if you don't have access to the beach you can buy dried seaweed Go to an Asian grocery store and buy the big packs of nori sheets. Break that down. It's still going to be cheaper than buying seaweed fertilizer from the nurseries. Okay. And you can get packs of like 100 nori sheets for very cheap. No, my address is not listed, my darling. I'm sorry. It really isn't. hi butler family farm how are you okay so the next one we're going to be looking at is comfrey tea comfrey tea is great not only is it great for the garden it's actually great for you as well now comfrey was known for a very long time as knit bone and it was given to people who had bone issues or joint issues and broken bones all of that kind of stuff because it actually enhances the healing processes for bones and joints which is awesome um and if it does that then imagine what it's going to do for your plants okay so it's going to actually be awesome for that as well so um you can 
with comfrey use a chop and drop method so at the end of the season cut it all down and then drop it out onto your beds etc or you can as you would with nettles make it into a tea again it stinks to high heaven i'm not gonna lie to you it absolutely is one of the rankest things on the planet but it's so good for your garden i can't even explain to you how good it is for the garden it does go a bit mad though okay um it does go a bit mad but it's worthwhile doing all right no i don't i certainly don't have a po box because here in the uk they're nearly 400 pounds for the year and we just don't have that sort of resource at the moment um but yeah <laughs> but if you email me if you email me to my email address below in the description um i can give you my address right so the next one we're going to be looking at we're going to be looking at worm tea and animal manure fertilizers as well um which basically um worm tea <laughs> you know they they just put <laughs> Some people call it worm pee. It, it, I suppose you could call it that. I, I don't see the problem with that. And on worm farms at the bottom of them, they have a catchment area for those liquids with a tap. So you can just pour it off, off of there. Again, it's, it's a concentrate, so you don't want to use too much of it. You're only going to want to use about like 100 mils to 10 litres or something like that, um, which is like uh, 10 litres is um two and a half gallons or something ah subs usually send gifts and such to their channels um i i've i've experienced a little bit of that but like i said if you do email me i will give you my address i just don't want to make it public um as i am very careful of who i hand it out to because I have had issues in the past and because I have been on the TV as well for certain things, I don't really want to hand out my address willy nilly, if that makes sense. Um, eventually when I do get monetized and I am big enough to do that, uh, the money from that will be going to get a PO box, but it will take a while to get that sorted out because they're not normal okay here. All right, darling, no problem. Okay. Um, so, yeah, composted animal manure fertilizer is, you can use it as in the rotting method. I mean, like if you're living on a farm or a property and you have that ability, then you can do that. That's not a problem. But you can also turn it into a liquid fertilizer, like I explained with the chicken fertilizer. You can do the same thing with that. Um, and pretty much, I mean, to be completely honest with you, right, there is nothing that you can't turn into some kind of feed for the garden, whether it's kitchen scraps, leftovers. If you go foraging and you can get nettles or comfrey wild or whatever, if you've got weeds, if you're weeding the garden, they can be put in a bucket to ferment. You know, all of these things, all of these things can be turned back into food for your plants in one way or another. And using them together is a really really good way to create the ultimate in like what weedy garden calls compassi um so that you have this amazing soil because the more amazing your soil is and the more that you feed it and the more that you look after it the better the food is and the better the food is going to be for you because it's going to contain all of those nutrients because that's where it gets it from it gets it from the soil let's be honest so if we don't look after that soil and we don't look after those plants and don't feed those plants, don't expect to get great tasting food that is good for you. OK. Now, there is one other method that I haven't come to you with yet. 
and this is a method that I use. When we were living in the other flat, we didn't have room for a compost bin and we didn't have enough stuff to really put on a compost bin and we couldn't set it up so that it was a useful way of doing it. So what I used to do was I'd get the kitchen scraps, the not the meat-based ones, only the vegetable-based ones, sometimes some dairy and absolutely, yes, eggs. They, they would go in there as well. Also, fish bones if we had them, things like that. Um, so they would go in the blender. That would then go in a bucket and I would add some water to it. As much as I put in of the, the um, kitchen scraps or mixed up kitchen scraps, that's how much water would go in. And I would let it ferment and ferment until the bucket was full. Once the bucket was full, that would be mixed up with my compost. So the bagged compost. And that would then be used to fill the pots and containers that I had for my um, for my growing. Can I just say, I had some of the best fruit and veg that I've ever grown from using that method. And I just did it without thinking because I thought, well, maybe that's the best way I'm going to do it. Our soil has been very stripped from nutrients, so it will take a long time to build it back up. Not necessarily. Depends on the methods that you're using. Um, if you choose to use a no-dig method for your soil, you can start creating lasagna beds like I did out the front um, with my garden where I just put a layer of um, cardboard and then I put a layer of manure and then we put a layer of cocoa coir uh, because we picked that up cheaper than we could get compost last year and we also put some straw over the top as well and that has created quite an amazing um, bed all of its own so you don't need to worry about what's underneath it because you're just creating more layers every year and every year you just do that you just put another layer of cardboard, another layer of manure, another layer of the compost, another layer of straw if that's how you want to do it, until you can start creating your own kind of really good compost. So it doesn't take that long and you can grow in it immediately. It really is that good. Um, yeah, so there we go, guys. That has been your lot for today. I really hope that you have enjoyed today's um, episode of um, introduction to urban homesteading and 10 ways to make your own compost fertilizers and feeds. Next week, we're going to be looking at companion planting and different ways of doing that. So I hope that you will be here for that and enjoy that. Um, if you want a really good resource for making compost, Tony O'Neill from Simply Gardening, uh, Sim Simply Gardening. Um, hang on. Ah, Simplify Gardening has a book called The Compost Master Masterclass. Now I will look it up for you because I'm that nice to you. Um, Tony O'Neill. Uh, Composting Masterclass. Right now, I am not affiliated or sponsored by him, but he is my mate, okay? And I am very aware that his book is everything that you could possibly ever need to know about composting. It's right there, okay? It's absolutely incredible. Um, it's absolutely an awesome, awesome, awesome book. And he's put so much work into it. So if you do want a masterclass on, co on composting, that would be the resource to go for. Um, so I will see you guys next week. Have a really great rest of your day. Um, it's been great spending time with you guys again. And I will see you next time. Bye.